Hello, my name is Michael Lehmann Horn. I'm the CEO of Magic Multimedia. We are a Grass Valley distributor for EMEA, so for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And I'm looking forward to answer your questions. The history of Edius starts when Canopus developed um, the DV editing boards. And the first one was the DV Rex. The DV Rex in the beginning was a I/O hardware, which worked together with Adobe Premiere and Ulit Media Studio. And uh, also in these beginnings, um, there was a tiny little software called Rex Edit, which was basically the first editor of Canopus. Canopus then was later acquired by Griswelli, but the team um, stayed almost the same. So with the years, um, the integration of this I.O. boards uh, was getting yeah, more and more complicated because um, companies like Adobe with Adobe Premiere, they started uh, to develop own real-time engines, which didn't really work um, in the beginning. And uh, the solutions from Canopus, so the software playback engine, which was inside Adobe Premiere, worked very, very well. But um, it was more and more a problem to um, take Adobe Premiere and change the whole engine uh, and put the Canopus engine inside. So, um, yeah, the developers and uh, uh, team and Cobra had the idea that they need their own software, which is more powerful than the original Rex Edit, which was basically a small tool, which was extremely fast, but could, had not so many possibilities. So um, a brand new editor was born in 2003, Edius. And now in November 2017, the newest version, version 9, was released. The development team of Edius was formed by Hiro Yamada, the founder and CEO of Canopus. Hiro left the company some years after uh, Canopus was uh, acquired by Grass Valley, and uh, the team basically stayed the same. Um, the team has uh, developed in the beginning the edit solutions like Rex Edit and later uh, Storm Edit and Raptor Edit and Let's Edit. So that was the engine um, and the editing platform uh, they developed first. And then later, 2003, they started with Edius. Grass Valley is a worldwide operating company and has different facilities spread over the whole world. The video editing part is located in Kobe, Japan. Edios 1 was developed by Canopus. Canopus became then later a part of Grass Valley. Grass Valley was acquired by Thompson and later became a part of Belden. So nowadays Grass Valley is a Belden brand, but the core team of Edios, the Edios developers, is still the same. So many of the members of the development team who developed Edios 1 are still in the same team today. The original target were the video professionals because those were the customers who were also buying the video I.O. hardware boards. After Canopus was acquired by Grass Valley in 2006, there was a much bigger focus on the broadcast sector as Grass Valley is mainly active in broadcast. Currently, the customer base is about 50% professionals, 50% broadcast users. But it depends also on the different regions. In Europe, for example, there are much more professional users than broadcast users. In the US, there are much more broadcast users than professional users. And in Asia, where Edius has the strongest market, there are about 50% professional users and broadcast users.
The main competitors of Edius are Adobe Premiere, Avid Media Composer, Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. The strong point of Edius has been and always is the stability of the software and the possibility to work really fast with different kinds of native formats. So Edius will uh, allow you to really be very quick in finishing your video and it will also give you a very high output quality. Um, that has a little bit to do with that um, the uh, development team of uh, Adios is situated in Japan. If you think where the most cameras come from, you easily understand that Japan is really an important market when it comes to formats. So the communication between the different developers um, for cameras and the editing software is very important. And uh, you can see that, for example, the Sony XAVC support of Edius is much better than in any other editing solution in the market. You can um, also see other uh, codecs where Edius is allowing the absolutely correct way to work with these formats. Uh, if you look at the GH5 from Panasonic, for example, the 10-bit, other editors have really problem to work correctly with these formats. So Edius and the development team is very much into the codex and the details of um, you know, working with video. But it's not the only thing. If, if you look at Edius 8, for example, we have had a, a life circle of about two years. And in these two years, there were many, many features, many functions integrated, not only file format support, uh, like, like raw and different uh, other uh, format supports. But you could see a brand new primary color correction, which also was or is now using the GPU power. And you can see lookup table support. You can see lock support and lock conversion to different formats. You uh, could see first steps into HDR. The motion tracker uh, for the mask was included uh, in Edius 8. The support for high resolution displays was integrated. And the export um, was extended with a new H.264 software encoder, which is very, very fast and offers very high quality, higher than in other editors. So, um, and there are many more functions like optical flow and, and others which were integrated in this version 8. So, when we talk about different features, we always listen to the community. That's also part um, of our work as, as distributor. For Edius 9, we got a lot of feedback that uh, the audio sync function should be integrated. Um, audio sync uh, for multi-camera editing is a good thing, but it's not perfect. As you know that audio has a delay um, if it comes yeah, from A to B. And it depends where the cameras are situated. Um, but we understand the community wants that feature, so it's now on the list for Edius 9. When we're talking about other functions like noise reduction, if you look at the market at different noise reduction tools and filters which are there, you can see that the difference in the quality is very, very high. Uh, personally, I like Neat Video best, and I think it, it is really the best tool to get rid of noise, not depending on if it's an old video or if it's gain from yeah, the latest camera in a bad uh, lighting situation. But if you want to denoise your video and you work with Edius together with this plugin Neat Video, I think you get a really perfect product because the integration of this plugin is really good. And I don't know if every editor needs to do all functionalities uh, if you see that there are plugins like, like that which are so good. Um, when we talk about the other question, uh, why is it not possible to zoom into the picture, that's funny because we're really asking a lot of uh, our, our customers and also resellers what features are requested and that is a feature which is not named very often. Because you can do that already now, you just need to use the layouter and set the, the zoom factor you need and put it on the clip. And then you, you can control the picture even on a monitor or external signal in a very high quality. So I don't know if this is needed, but um, as I tell you, if we get many uh, questions about a feature, 
normally you can see that it, it will be integrated in the lifetime of the product. And the whole idea of how Edius 9 is now um, sold, it's sold as a software which you buy and you can keep it forever. You don't have to pay subscription fees or anything like that. But um, you will get during the life cycle of the product, which is about two years, you get free updates from time to time. So we have just seen uh, the release of Edius 9.10 which allows you to export H.265 via QuickSync hardware encoder and which allows you to work perfectly with the XAVC proxy. I think that is very nicely integrated in EDUS. And we will see at NAB uh, the version 9.20 with some more nice features. Business is becoming more versatile and we think the key for success is offering a solution which is flexible and um, so interesting for the different kinds of markets and different types of customers. But um, I think that uh, the main thing why you want to use an editor is that you uh, want a stable piece of software which is able to use the kind of video footage you, you work with. So it needs to be flexible and take all different kinds of formats. It needs to work in a very high quality, also in output, and it needs to be fast. And if I look at those features, I think Edius is still the number one. I'm not sure if you have a main competitor. That is my personal opinion, but you see that we have different approaches in the market. So Adobe, for example, with the subscription, with the Creative Cloud, is no longer selling the software, it's renting out the software. I think um, to rent something is nice sometimes, uh, like uh, yeah, for a streaming uh, service uh, for different films or music. But um, if it's your tool you are um, renting, I'm not really sure if that is a good idea. Probably for Adobe it's a good idea, um, but for the customers, um, I'm not really sure if on the long term um, that is a business model which um, is working in a, in a good way for them. Because um, you cannot get out. If, if you get out, you lose everything. You cannot uh, open your project anymore. And uh, that is a kind of yeah, brutal way to... Uh, to have a close connection to your customer. And I think the, the way Grass Valley is doing this by offering um, a software which you buy and you keep it and you can use it forever. And um, also here, I mean, you, you see that when you buy the software, like now Edius 9, um, you get free updates all the time during the whole life cycle, like uh, two years. And and for Adobe, the argument is that, well, if you have subscription, you get all these new features, but it's the same thing with Edius. The only difference is if you stop paying. So for Edius, if you don't buy the next update uh, and uh, compared with Adobe not paying the regular subscription fee anymore, with Edius, you still can work. You can continue with the version you have, which you have bought uh, with Adobe. You, you lose your tool. You cannot open your project. I think that is dangerous and it's also not fair. Um, if you look at other players in the market, um, like Magic with DaVinci Resolve, um, you can see that you have a very powerful tool, no question. DaVinci has always been a great tool for color grading. Um, we see also there has been and still is a good uh, possibility to work um, together with DaVinci from, for Edius users. But now they are trying to be more and more editor which um, I think they have done in a good way, but still um, the core of the program is not an editor. Editor, It is a, um, a color grading tool and it, it's a color grading tool with edit functions and with, with more functionalities. Uh, but if, if you do different jobs, um, I think it's very easy to understand that uh, you, you can be much faster with a bigger project in Edius than you are uh, in DaVinci Resolve. And um, it, it surely has to do with different needs. 
Um, I personally think also that uh, if you work a lot of uh, with raw uh, formats, um, Da Vinci is really great. Edius is not really done for raw. It's, it can do raw now, but it's not the main function. Um, Edius um, is perfectly to use with uh, the different compressed file formats which you have in cameras and, and camcorders. And uh, it's really specialized to work with those codecs. Um, so you'll get better results in that area. Um, the, there's another thing which I think is a big difference for this market, and that's also the same for Adobe. Uh, when you buy Edus, you, you buy it from a reseller who is authorized. And this authorized reseller will give you technical support, and he's your contact. So if you have problems, you can always contact him, and you get answers. Uh, we as the distributor for uh, EMEA, uh, we have a, a trained support team with Edus experts who um, then take uh, feedback from resellers if they have a problem which they cannot solve. And in the end, we report those to the development team in, um, in Japan. So we have a really close uh, contact. If you're an Adobe user, have you ever received support from Adobe? If it's installation, Probably yes. If it's activation, probably yes. But if it's uh, a question regarding the software, I think that is really a big problem. And uh, it's kind of the same for Resolve, because Re Resolve is sold through the Blackmagic uh, reseller uh, channel, and uh, they are not really software specialists. They are selling all different kinds of pro uh, products from Blackmagic, and uh, the products are, are uh, inexpensive. But um, the margin is as well, so you don't get additional service. Um, right now, I don't even know who, uh, which reseller is offering additional software support. And you see that also in a way of um, uh, not only support, also in uh, localization. For Edius, um, we have a Spanish, a French, an Italian, a German, and of course, an English uh, user interface. And uh, we have um, yeah, the different Edius uh, websites. You can see uh, I have here <laughs> my Edius 9 mousepad with Edius Net, which is English, DE for German, ES for Spain, FR for France, and IT for Italy. And uh, now we are just uh, starting with NL for the Netherlands. We see by having this reseller structure and this local support, that um, we, we can take care of um, the customers in a really proper way. And I, I don't see that connection uh, from other um, manufacturers of editors anymore. So I think that is also, when we talk about competition, uh, this is a big plus um, Edius is offering to their customer base, that uh, there is really somebody taking care of the customers. It's not just putting the latest software version in the web and then in the cloud or somewhere else, and then uh, yeah, hoping for its best. So um, main competitors, maybe uh, no, but I have here just named two examples where I think it's, it's, it's a way they are going, but it, it probably is not for every user the right way. To be honest, I'm not sure if Edius really has uh, extreme software protection. I think it's a quite uh, typical software protection, which is done by internet uh, activation. You can also do um, an offline activation. So if you have an editing system on a place where there's no internet, uh, you can use the tool and create a small key on a USB stick, go to an internet PC, and come then back to the PC and uh, to the editing PC and activate Edius. Uh, that works uh, with the workgroup version, which is uh, normally not using internet access directly. But um, yes, there is an internet um, activation uh, necessary. Uh, it's a copy protection, uh, which also I think is uh, definitely needed. Um, but uh, when you say that um, sometimes PCs can be hurt by the protection, um, I've asked uh, in, in Japan, there's no such case known where ever uh, the activation of EDUS has hurt a PC. 
Um, I cannot imagine that. It's a small little tiny information which is written to the hard disk and there's no way that this can hurt uh, a PC and make it uh, useless. So um, I, I think that is maybe a fear but you don't need to fear that. Also we can see that the copy protection is working nicely in two ways. First of all the ones who are buying Edus, I think they don't uh, have any complaints about the activation. It's a way where they can control the activations on their own, they can activate, they can deactivate and they, if they have a problem like they have they're using one Edus license on two PCs and one PC is suddenly crashing um, they will be able to do another activation very easily. Um, if the system is activated too often and it's not deactivated anymore then you'll get the information, okay, it's activated too often. Uh, you can contact your reseller and after contacting your reseller he will um, uh, yeah, allow you to uh, deactivate the license on the PC which has crashed and then you can activate a new PC. So um, this is a, something which is working very nicely. I can say that for really the whole of Europe, Middle East and Africa as we're doing the the tech support there also and we're handling the, these activations. Um, it's, it's working without problems and we don't get much complaints about it um, as yeah, something what you say that this activation has hurt a PC has never happened. I'm sure that there are positive sides of piracy, especially for the ones who are selling the uh, hacked uh, and cracked software. But no, to be honest, um, I don't think uh, that uh, there are positive sides. You can always say that uh, yes, if the software is cracked, you see that there will be much more users in the market. But um, if those users don't pay for it, um, you don't have um, a positive effect. Um, well, what we could see um, in the last years is that uh, in markets which in the past have been, yeah, how to say, were, were cracked uh, or uh, almost free software has been very popular, like, like China, uh, we could see that the activation um, which uh, came with Edius 6.5 has increased the sales massively. So that means that uh, now uh, China is the second biggest market for Edius in the world. And um, that is only possible because of copy protection and uh, the money which is earned here can be used to develop um, the product. And I think that is uh, very much needed. So um, positive effects of uh, piracy, uh, no. I think uh, the watermark in the trial version is a fair way to um, allow users who are interested in buying Edius to test the software in a proper way because you can use basically the whole um, software. Um, there is just the possibility to, to render is um, uh, yeah, not 100% like in the full version and of course if you output something then uh, it will include the watermark. Otherwise you can work like uh, with a full version. And um, if you start your project with the trial version and you want to output it in full quality, well all you need to do is buy a license. Then you can make a trial version directly into a full version. And even if you're not sure, ah, do I really need to buy the software, maybe it's not the right thing, uh, we have the possibility that um, if you're not happy with the software you can return it. So we will, um, there's an activation system, it's very easy to deactivate the software if you don't want to keep it. Um, so uh, that is something uh, we definitely can do if you don't like uh, to keep your edus and uh, that, then we, we can uh, take it back normally within a time period of 90 days. Um, so I think that that is a fair way. And even we can go further, um, you can contact your reseller uh, to ask about a trial version which has um, the watermark uh, not included um, if you can really tell us 
why that this is needed. So um, then your reseller uh, can ask us for a special serial number and we can provide that uh, in that case. So I think uh, the way um, it's, it's done now is uh, it's a good way because the problem occurred that uh, the trial version has been used in yeah, not the right way in some cases. We have seen um, many users and especially uh, even TV stations who use the trial version 30 days and then another 30 days and another 30 days because there were way to manipulate uh, the time of the Windows system so that you could reset the trial version. And um, now with the watermark, this is no longer possible. Uh, and I think, yeah, it's the only way uh, the manufacturer of the software has to uh, protect um, yeah, his uh, yeah, uh, software in, uh, in a way that uh, still uh, the developers of the software can be paid. Yes, HDR is a very important thing in EDUS 9, but um, don't forget there are more features in EDUS 9 and there will come even more features during the life cycle of EDUS 9. For HDR, I think the main approach of EDUS is to keep it simple and fast. And um, I think um, one thing which has been done very good is that EDUS already understands uh, many different uh, cameras, camera formats, which come uh, HDR flag. And you will directly see that the material of this camera is recognized correctly and can then be output also with this HDR flag. Um, I think right now EDUS is probably the easiest HDR um, editor in the market. And of course during version 9 this will be even more improved. Right now there's the focus on PQ and Hyperdoc Gamma as the main output um, targets are for web and for broadcasters, but um, yeah, in the future there might be um, even uh, other formats or new approaches, and um, it's hard to say which will be the the right one. Um, the display manufacturers they are working with different. Uh, panels and of course they want to show that their technology is the best one and uh, yeah, sometimes they come up with new standards and uh, for the editors it's not always uh, so easy to support all these different kinds of formats but I think um, Sony have done a very good approach with the instant HDR, the hybrid log gamma because this is really working absolutely nicely and if you have a Sony HDR camera and a Sony HDR 4K monitor you have a very easy workflow just by filming and then showing on this monitor and EDUS is just going in between so you can use the footage and you can handle it in a proper way. And But also other cameras like uh, the Panasonic GH5 support this hybrid log gamma and uh, I'm sure there are more cameras to come. And um, yeah, right now there is a kind of easy workflow uh, for HDR which I think also is necessary because um, HDR itself is complicated enough. If the editor <laughs> now makes it even more complicated, it's not a big help. So um, yeah, EDUS is in a way your best friend to make HDR work. EDUS supports the export to DVD and Blu-ray. But uh, basically the authoring is very simple. That is also the idea um, to keep it simple. Uh, of course, there's the possibility to do a menu. You can edit and create it also with own graphics and even with uh, background video. But there's no support for wider DVD functions like subtitles or different audio versions. But you can export audio in stereo or 5.1. Um, there's a Dolby uh, encoder uh, included. And uh, unique maybe is the possibility if you make a DVD, you can um, write uh, to more than one driver at a time. So if you need some more copies of the DVD and you have more drives, you can write up to three drives at the same time. I think that is quite unique. I don't know uh, any other editor who has that function. Uh, very nice is also the possibility uh, to have make a DVD uh, even if you don't have a DVD format in your timeline. So if you have like 4K, 
um, or you have a 50p format, um, you can even make a, a DVD uh, in 50i uh, in a standard uh, resolution. So that is a function which has been added uh, within EDUS 8. So there are some improvements which are still going on in this uh, DVD and Blu-ray authoring area. But I think in general the demand for uh, DVD and Blu-ray export is uh, lower. Uh, it's getting lower with the time, but still it's an important feature for many, many users. The export to different file formats is getting more and more important, yes of course. And also MKV is a format which we are looking into. Uh, so it might be supported in the future as a container format. Right now H.264 and H.265 are the export formats uh, which are the most interesting. For H.264 you could even see in the last EDUS 8 versions um, a big improvement of the encoder regarding speed and also the encoding quality. And uh, now for EDUS 9, uh, with the EDUS 9.0 uh, release, there have been a big improvement in rendering time. So if you have a system with many cores, like the system I'm sitting here with uh, 48 cores, 24 real one and uh, with hyperthreading 48, the speed of rendering uh, H.264, if you compare it to EDUS 8, is now uh, just uh, the half time and even if you compare it to other editors like Premiere it's double the speed and you can see here that the picture quality even is higher because it's not uh, a codec which Graswelli is buying and including in EDUS it's the own Graswelli um, H.264 codec so they developed the codec on their own and um, yeah we are very proud that we have that codec. And um, the same thing probably will happen with H.265. Right now in, in 9.10 we have support for uh, the export using QuickSync technology. And um, so the latest uh, Intel uh, GPUs uh, having H.265 encoder on board can now be used. And the picture quality is also very good. So the integration that use um, is very powerful. And um, there will be more and more um, development uh, in H.265 as this format is of course uh, getting more and more interesting uh, in the future. EDUS includes MINK. MINK is a personal media asset management tool where you can organize your clips. So MINK is able of importing all different kinds of media formats, not only video, also audio and pictures. And you can organize the clips, the, those clips in um, different ways. So you can do folders and you can make storyboards, but you also can uh, give tags to the clips so that you're able to really find clips very fast. And the integration of Mink is very nicely. So if you prepare something in Mink, you can do a storyboard and then send that directly to the timeline of EDUS. But there are also other tools which are helpful, for example, the proxy mode. Um, if you have a big system and uh, you, you're doing a documentary and you need to you know, go somewhere else, um, you can check out from a system and uh, just use the proxy, so low resolution files and um, use an inexpensive laptop to even work with 4K uh, footage because um, EDIUS will be able to generate a small a low resolution file or if you're working with XAVC now after you have installed EDUS 9.10 you have even a XAVC proxy workflow so you can use the original proxies which camera made um, in that way. Well that is my personal opinion. I think um, still the organization of clips and working in bigger projects is uh, much nicer in EDUS than it is in Resolve. Resolve has not really been produced in the beginning uh, to, to, to make a big um, project. It's, uh, in, in its core it's a color grading tool where you arrange um, yeah, some clips and, and do uh, the color correction. Of course this changes with time. But um, still I think uh, the core of EDUS is uh, much faster for 
uh, such uh, big a project and um, you can truly say that for some um, uh, projects where you work a lot with raw footage um, Resolve might be the better tool but uh, for documentaries where you probably don't work so much with raw files but you have long files in different kinds of formats I think Edius is the perfect editor. For collaborative work for Edius, you can use Stratos. Um, Stratos is uh, media asset management and uh, workflow management, uh, which is widely used uh, through broadcasters all over the world. Um, with this tool, you have the possibility to uh, even work on multiple uh, sites. If you just have Edius, uh, I would um, yeah, recommend the Edius workgroup version, which, uh, for example, supports the watch folder. With a watch folder, you can easily work together because the uh, Edius is automatically importing files from a special folder in a network. So if somebody is doing graphics or audio or other things, th these files will automatically uh, be imported and you get a small uh, message that new file is there. So that helps uh, in working together and speeding up the process. Edius has uh, some basic and I think very good and also very fast uh, color grading tools. So the most important one is of course the primary color correction. Um, it is planned to, um, uh, within version 9, to even expand the capabilities of um, the color correction. Um, I think for the most um, kinds of video editing work, uh, the color grading functionalities of Edius um, how they are right now um, are perfect but of course if you want to make a, a movie for the cinema uh, probably you would use another tool but um, except, as said before you can even uh, exchange um, uh, data with Da Vinci um, so there are workflows which allow you to do a very detailed color grading in other tools and uh, the basic idea of Edius is really to keep it uh, easy and, of course, um, very fast. Yes, we have just released Edius 9.10 and this version is now supporting the export of HEVC, so H.265, uh, with all uh, Intel QuickSync um, CPUs which support H.265 that is starting from the sixth generation of Intel i-Core uh, CPUs and with the seventh and eighth generation in the export you even have 10-bit support. And the quality of this export is uh, really good. So the integration has been in the proper way for the decoding process. Already uh, the QuickSync support was included in Edius 8. So these processes which have a hardware decoder, which are basically the same kinds of processes, so starting from the sixth generation, um, decoding process is speed up massively if you're working with Edius 8 or Edius 9. Yes, rendering with the GPU uh, is under consideration also for export. You could see that some parts of the GPUs are already used for uh, acceleration of the color correction in Edius. But um, it's not really uh, so important to use uh, the GPU as uh, if you look close uh, into the latest version Edius 9, you can see that with these high-end systems which have many cores or even multiple CPUs, you get much better results in Edius 9 than uh, in, in Edius 8 or even with other editors. So the new software encoder has been optimized for multiprocessing in Edius 9 and you will see that a high-end uh, workstation like the one I'm just sitting here with uh, 24 cores or uh, with hyper-threading uh, 48 cores uh, are much faster now in Edius 9 and they are much faster than using a GPU and the quality is even higher. And I think that is uh, showing that uh, using uh, CPU power in a proper way uh, is still a very good uh, way to 
exceed excellent um, results. Edius 9 comes with multiple GPU transition effects. They're all marked as GPU effects, so you can see directly that they are using the GPU. Also, the primary color correction is using the GPU support. And there are decoding functionalities for RAW, which are also using um, the GPU power. So all these processes can be speeded up uh, by using a powerful GPU. More and more competitors are also using native file support. Um, beside that, it's maybe interesting to hear that um, Gross Valley has its own codec also. So you can work natively, but you have your own intermediate codec. Um, not all competitors have their own intermediate codec, and I think that is important, as the intermediate codec also can be helpful if you work with, for example, animations, even with alpha included, which can be used in Edius directly and um, has a very simple and easily workflow. Uh, but coming back to native file editing, uh, I think the big advantage of um, Edius is that the Kobe team has their own um, codec developer. So um, when it comes to native formats, it's not like integrating um, some other kits into the software Edius. It's really um, a core part of Edius. Um, because the knowledge for uh, MPEG, H.264, H.265 uh, codecs is in the team. And I think that uh, makes a difference. And you probably can see that even when you talk about things like stability. Let's say it like this. Gress Valley is always trying to uh, make the workflow better and to allow a better user experience. So if there is a better way, then um, for sure they will not uh, stay with the old technique. Most editing functions can be mapped to the keyboard to a, a shortcut. We have, for example, the Edius keyboard, uh, which is a nice um, and colorful uh, keyboard where you see the different um, um, types of shortcuts, like uh, the light blue ones are to navigate, uh, the dark blue multicam, and we have um, uh, purple for editing functions and uh, yellow for markers and so on. And uh, with such a keyboard, you can definitely control edus almost completely. So you minimize the mouse function. And uh, in addition, you can um, add um, something like a, a controller, like this uh, truck shuttle controller, or even for audio, um, you can have a motor fader, uh, like this uh, Behringer uh, device. Um, so there are different ways to control edus. And for those to, who are used to certain shortcuts, of course, you, you can change them in the way you like. But there are also presets, uh, for example, for Avid Media Composer users or Final Cut Pro users or Adobe Premiere users. Uh, Adios does not support macros internally, so um, there's no direct embedded function for macros, but there are some uh, third-party plugins which uh, can uh, add macro functionality to um, edius. You can even use uh, the macro editor of the contour uh, shuttle, uh, which allows you also to automate uh, some processes and uh, there are other plugins as well. And uh, for API support and uh, so on, that is in fact something uh, the development team is looking into. So we might see uh, more possibilities here in the future.